very much. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Greg, uh, for the introductions. And good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here um, and provide you with a bit of a taster lecture on issues to do with um, global development or international development. We're renaming this now into global development, acknowledging that poverty is global and not just restricted uh, to low and middle income countries. Um, maybe just a quick introduction to myself and uh, our School of Global Development. Um, my, my name is Maren. I'm a professor of evaluation in economics. Uh, I'm part of the School of Global Development. Um, we are very multidisciplinary uh, school. Um, where economists, political scientists, anthropologists and environmental scientists working together on issues related to understanding poverty better and doing something uh, about poverty as well. And as Craig said, um, we are one of the leading uh, schools of um, international global development. Um, in the recent research excellence framework, we were ranked number one for our research in the country. So we are one of the leading schools in this area uh, and we are actually celebrating our 50th anniversary um, this year as well. So it's a very special um, year for us. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna share some slides now to just give you a bit of a, a taste uh, lecture. Yeah, I think the slides come up. Great, excellent. So what I would like to talk to you to today is um, just very briefly really, um, is the world becoming a better place? Um, so this is the question we are starting with. So, and what I would like to do is to basically uh, analyze some of the empirical evidence that we have about economic progress over the last few centuries. Um, and the goal of this is to understand what it actually means in terms of poverty. Um, and we try to answer the question, is there less poverty now than there was centuries ago? Okay, so let's see what the empirical evidence has to say on this topic. So I have a few graphics here for you that I'll talk you through. Um, so in this graphic here, you see the gross domestic product, which is a measure to express whether countries have experienced economic growth or not. Uh, you can see on this slide, the gross domestic product has actually increased tremendously only in the last few decades. So if you look at the horizontal bar uh, or um, horizontal line, you see the year zero to 2015. So this is information over the last 2000 years. And you can see that economic growth was pretty much flatlining for most of these 2000 years. And only really in recent decades, you see a massive increase uh, of um, gross domestic product, suggesting that there's massive economic growth. So it's been skyrocketing. So if this is really the case, that economic growth has increased, then what does it mean for poverty? You would have thought if all countries experience some sort of economic growth, then at the same time, poverty should actually decrease. So let's see what the empirical evidence has to say on this uh, particular issue of poverty. So first of all, we have to understand that poverty is measured in many different ways. There are so-called poverty lines. Some of these poverty lines suggest that you're poor if you live on less than $2 a day. Others suggest that you're extremely poor if you're living on less than $1 a day. And then more recently, the World Bank has come up with another poverty measure that suggests that you're very poor if you live uh, on less than $1.90 a day. Okay, so, so roughly, um, you know, you consider to be poor um, in relation to having less than $2 a day on average, okay, and extremely poor if you have less than $1 a day to live on. So in this graphic here, if you look at the different lines, especially the yellow line and the red line, you actually see that these lines are nicely pointing downwards. So you see again, the time frame also 1820 to 2015. So we have a 200 year time period. And in this time period, you can actually see that all the lines you see in this graphic are pointing downwards, suggesting that poverty irrespective of the poverty line or measure you're using, poverty has been reducing over this period of time, quite substantially so, in fact, from the 1960s onwards. And if you then relate this information to the previous slide, suggesting that economic growth has skyrocketed, especially the last four or five decades, you could quite easily think that poverty has declined as economic growth has increased. But it's not all quite so straightforward. So let's now look um, where and in what way poverty has actually um, decreased, because not all continents have benefited from a decrease in poverty in the same way. 
you know, so if you look at this particular graphic here, you see in the blue line here, I get, and that's only a time period of the last 30 or so years. So it's a shorter time period we're now looking at, but we're looking in depth at the different uh, levels of poverty by different geographies. So Sub-Saharan Africa, you can see that poverty has always been very high. So more than 50% of the population has lived on less than a dollar a day or less than uh, $1.9 a day. So, but you can see that poverty has slightly decreased in Sub-Saharan Africa. So that's the blue line again, um, but still 40% of people are considered to be very poor. But on the other hand, you look at the other lines on this graphic here, the, especially the ones, uh, the line that is red, that's a very sharp decrease, and that's representing East Asia and the Pacific. So you can see that 60% of people in East Asia and the Pacific, that's the region that you're living in, were considered to be poor. But then in 2013, less than 10% of these people were considered to be poor. So it seems that poverty has decreased more substantially in certain areas in this world than in other areas, with East Asia and the Pacific, um, Europe, uh, Latin America doing incredibly well, while Sub-Saharan Afri Sub Africa uh, seems to be the loser here, okay? So it seems poverty is concentrated in different um, pockets of this world. So given this information that I've kind of introduced you to now, so why is it then, so on the surface of it, it looks like poverty has decreased in some uh, areas of this world more so than in others, but on the whole, poverty has decreased. So why is it then that uh, a survey of British people has suggested, or they believe, that poverty has actually increased? So there are different ways of trying to understand why the people's perception on poverty is that it has not actually decreased. On the contrary, it has increased. So why is that? And there are different ways of looking at this, okay, to understand why people think poverty is still pervasive. So again, poverty is concentrated in different pockets of this world, we have seen this, but it's also concentrated in different um, population categories. So from this slide here now, you can actually see that a lot of children, shockingly really, are living in extreme poverty. So if you, for example, look at the, and I'm not sure whether you see my cursor here moving uh, on the, uh, the bit that's on the far left of this graphic, you can see my cursor circling uh, one figure here, which is uh, uh, figures for extreme poor, moderate poor, and non-poor. And this relates, that relates to the share of children that are younger than 15 that live across the globe and that are considered to be poor. And you can see here that 44% of children are considered to be extremely poor. That means they live on less than a dollar a day. And there are 35% of children uh, considered to be moderate poor, living between $1.90 uh, and $3.10 um, uh, per day. So that means it's like 80%, like, yes, pretty much roughly 80% of children live in some form of poverty, extreme or moderate poverty. And that's really quite shocking that children um, are subjected to living uh, like this, okay? So poverty, and this may explain why a lot of people still believe that poverty is, is rampant and really on the rise because they see a lot of poor children uh, across the globe. But you also see a lot of poverty in the rural areas. And again, if you see my cursor moving around, this is the bit of the graphic here with the green bars. So the share of, of people living in rural areas uh, and living in poverty is extremely high. So globally, 80% of people living in rural areas are considered to be uh, extremely poor. So you can see the opportunities uh, you know, the people in rural areas have seem to be limited, okay? So poverty is really rampant uh, in these areas, okay? And then there are other pieces of information on this slide, which I'm going to skip over now, but I think really it's important to highlight that there are certain areas, uh, you know, especially related to children and also people living in rural areas are disproportionately affected by poverty and they have not really benefited from any of the economic growth uh, that we've seen otherwise. So another thing is also, um, and that's relating back to geography, is that some of the extremely poor people are concentrated on one particular continent, and that's sub-Saharan Africa. And you can see two world maps here. One is denoting extreme poverty, and in this case, the poverty line we're using is that of the World Bank of $1.90 a day. So you can see the darker the color, so the, the darker the shade of red, the more poor a country is. So you can see on the left-hand side, again, you see my mouse moving about, 
on the left hand side, you can see that um, especially countries in Central and Southern and Eastern Africa, but also to a certain degree in Western Africa, are living in extreme poverty. And the graphic or the world map on the right shows you the levels of poverty, okay? So the poverty line is slightly different looking at people living on less than $3 a day. And again, the darker the shade of red, the more likely this country is, is affected by poverty. So you can see very clearly that Africa is disproportionately affected uh, by poverty, uh, whereas other countries in this world have really benefited from economic growth and managed to lift themselves out of poverty. So on the, on the one more point on the graphic on the right hand side, I've said so far that Africa has been the continent that's been mostly affected by poverty, but you can also see, and I say, you see my mouse moving about again, uh, hovering over South Asia or India in particular, you can also see that India seems to be the country uh, in uh, Asia that is all, uh, also very much affected um, by poverty. Okay, okay. so moving on then. Okay, so, um, and I think another um, um, point here is that, you know, in certain regions of this world, poverty is actually not going down. It is in fact going up. And this is what is illustrated by this particular slide, especially looking at the blue bar at the very bottom uh, of this particular slide, looking at the time period from 1987 to 2013, you actually see that the actual numbers of poor people in Sub-Saharan Africa is increasing. So in 1987, for example, there were slightly more than 200 million uh, people uh, living in extreme poverty. And then you can see by 2013, this number has actually increased to close to 400 million people living in poverty just in Africa alone. So again, you know, there are all these graphics that suggest a decrease in poverty while economic growth has increased. But if you then disaggregate this information by regions or by certain sections in the population, the picture may look very different and in fact may suggest that poverty has increased in certain sections of um, this world. And in this case, Africa has really um, lost out. Okay, and then interestingly, um, I've highlighted uh, on one of the slides, I've just highlighted India being disproportionately affected by poverty and really being the only country in Asia being severely uh, affected by poverty. And this may actually come as a surprise to many of you because you may associate India uh, with the IT industry. Um, you know, there's a lot of business happening. So actually there are a lot of rich people in this country um, as well. But um, so that may suggest that a country like India may actually have a lot of resources to help uh, its general population to um, get out of poverty. But interestingly, and maybe that's something that not a lot of you are aware of, a lot of the resources that India has are actually spent on its space program. So again, you may think a poor country uh, that you know had, has a large share of the population living in poverty, um, you know, how can this country uh, find the resources to actually invest uh, in a space program so it can compete with other uh, big nations, okay? So it's an issue of resource allocation. So I think that shows you that poverty um, is pervasive, but the government also needs to show willingness to seriously tackle poverty. And you could argue in the case of India, for example, that the government may have other competing priorities, some of which are related to alleviating poverty, but also um, uh, in relation to other things, uh, which is competing with other nations on space programs or other things that maybe a lot of people may not consider to be uh, entirely essential. Okay, so this is maybe a less well known fact that India actually spends a lot of resourcing on something that's nothing to do with poverty, really. So and I think this is kind of, um, and I, I don't want to Yes, and I want to just sum up because I could say a lot more, but I also would like to have an opportunity to maybe take questions or get comments. So just to maybe sum up what we've um, discussed so far. Um, so we have seen tremendous economic growth uh, over the last um, few decades in particular. And in parallel, we've seen a lot of improvement also in social indicators, uh, for example, life expectancy, child mortality, levels of education, they all have improved uh, a great deal, to be honest. Um, but then if you ask the question, is the world less poor now? Has poverty in fact gone down? Um, then maybe the picture may look slightly different. So you can partially answer this question uh, in terms of percent of the world population, 
you know, like the share of the population living in poverty, has that gone up or down? This has definitely gone down, right? So we have definitely made some progress here. But in terms of a hungry mouth, especially in relation to looking at children, for example, we don't, we can't really say that poverty has necessarily uh, gone down, okay? Because the figure of 80% of children living in either extreme or moderate poverty is not something that should be acceptable to anybody, right? Um, in terms of sufferance uh, relative to the means available to fight poverty, in fact, you know, poverty may have slightly um, increased and the, the world is actually slightly poorer than it maybe was a few decades ago. Um, and then in terms of regions, areas, and particular categories in the population, there are people who have certainly been left behind, and that's really very uh, worrying. And I have to say that actually um, now the last um, few years, uh, you know, when we suffered through the COVID-19 pandemic, I think we will see, and the UN actually has already indicated that we will see a massive setback uh, in terms of poverty uh, because of COVID-19, because especially people in uh, low and middle income countries working in informal sectors, they, they have been severely affected by COVID-19. They lost their livelihoods. Um, a lot of governments uh, have not put in the resources to help people um, find alternative options uh, for employment and so on. So I think the fight against poverty has really been set back quite considerably uh, by COVID-19. Also in terms of children, in fact, a lot of children had to be taken out of school, join the workforce, help for, to fam for families to survive and so on. And once these children are out of school, they will not return to school. That's usually what we see from the evidence. So there's a lot more work to be done to tackle uh, poverty. There are some promising signs um, that poverty is being addressed and tackled, but it's a very slow progress and it's pretty much an obstacle course to navigate. And I think I'll stop here um, and thank you for your attention. And I'd be very happy to take any questions, anything related to uh, kind of the taster lecture I've just presented, but happy to also talk about um, the School of Global Development or the university. Thank you.